Hello, my name is Cecilia Donald. I'm a member of the Greater Bible Way Temple of Albion. We're located at 402 Austin Avenue, Michigan, Albion, Michigan. Zip code is 49224. Our pastor is Kevin Williams Jr. Please join us on our website, which is gbwtalbion.org. SC. What a wonderful job we're doing right now here in this community. Please join us and thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord. We need you in the name of Jesus Christ here at Greater Bible Way Temple of Albion. We are in our Sunday school lesson. We won't be with you that long, but we want to focus on today the importance of witnessing. The importance of witnessing. You see, there is a very strong presence uh, from God's point of view. It's tons and tons and tons of scriptures talking about the importance of witnessing, the importance of evangelizing, the importance of spreading the gospel, the importance of being prepared when you're going out to witness. And God did not stop saving people when he saved you. Amen. And we should not be selfish of the blessings, the lifestyle uh, that we live. Amen. Some of us are here today because the sacrifice that we made for God. Amen. Uh, but let us start at St. Matthew and I know we've been dealing with this now probably uh, three months. The scripture has been in rotation in our Bible studies, our Sunday school lessons, uh, even some of our sermons. Uh, but it's very important that we identify uh, with this mentality uh, that God has intended uh, for his disciples, which the word disciple means follower. It simply means follower. Uh, so we all are followers of Jesus Christ. Let's look here at St. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. And it says, He saith unto them. And it's in red, so who said it? Jesus. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. It's very simple. A lot of people refuse to follow Jesus Christ simply on the fact that it's not popular. Um, it's more popular now to be a lesbian or it's more popular now to be a homosexual. And it's a shame that our TV structure, you cannot have a sitcom TV show these days without uh, the show uh, having a homosexual character. Um, and it's very sad uh, because even though those in the Hollywood community might have been living that lifestyle, they would fear to even put that and record that as an episode or in the movies. Even now, uh, as you look at the cartoons, I believe The Beauty and the Beast, the latest version from Disney, uh, they have a homosexual character in that movie. So now they are penetrating our youth. And then I had a conversation with somebody in the barbershop or during while I was getting my hair cut, rather. And we talked about Bert and Ernie on Sesame Street. See, that's what I grew up on, some of us did. But did we ever realize why it was two grown men living together? One, right? Two, why was they sleeping in the same room? <laughs> so even then, we found out that they was driven then. Uh, because the media's job is to pollute our thought process. Their job is to think for us. Uh, their job is to repeatedly uh, uh, almost like hypnotism, the same thing over and 
over and over again that we may follow it. But uh, we see here that Jesus was speaking to his disciples uh, at that particular time frame, and he was letting them know, praise the Lord, uh, about the importance of witnessing. And most of the disciples had to give to fish, uh, be fishermen. But God's intent for his disciples, which is all of us, if you claim to be saved, God's intent for all of us is to be saved. Right? And if God's intent for all his disciples is to be fishers of men. Amen. That's one of your sole purposes of being saved. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. Isaiah is a major prophet. He's here in your Old Testament. And although um, the Church of Israel was a collection of one of the biggest churches ever recorded, documented in history, uh, I believe Moses was pastoring millions of people uh, at that particular time frame. Uh, I couldn't imagine that type of responsibility. But Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. Amen. This is referring to the word of God. God's word is not supposed to turn to him for. Therefore, in the scriptures, if God tells us as Christians to do something, we should do it. Amen. It should not get back to him that we read his word, we were taught his word, we received preaching from his word, right? Even if you go to Psalms, when people see these songs, the praise team, the choirs, the soloists, they see these wonderful songs concerning uh, God, his word, and how we're supposed to live and think, and we still are not being obedient to God's word. That's what Isaiah is speaking to here. And remember, Isaiah was one of the two prophets from the Old Testament that prophesied the coming of Jesus Christ in flesh. He prophesied. So you can see the power that he had. God was dealing with him. So even he understands the illustration of putting forth the word. Now, your job as Christians is not to have Bible studies independent from your past. You should not go on Walmart, get the chairs that they sell, make a circle inside of Walmart, pull the stand over here, right, from this on display, praise the Lord, sit down in front of the stand, and begin to teach. As a lay member of the city, that is not your job. Amen. You only open your mouth from the knowledge that you have concerning God's word if they ask a question. At the point that they ask a question mm -hmm. and you give them a response and show them scripture and they continue, your job at that point is to point them to your pastor. Now see, we have bigger churches that we have people that may be over the ministerial team or the pastor may have people in place that he gives assignments out to. Mm -hmm. But our job is not to create an assignment, especially if we're not willing to take out the tax. That's why me, don't bring nothing to me, because I'm going to put you over what you brought to me. Amen. Especially if you live right in God's eyesight, mainly, but what I can see. Somebody brought to me, Pastor, we should have a website. Okay, great, you can be over that ministry. Pastor, we should be more influential in social media. This person is right. Okay, you can be over that ministry. 
Praise the Lord. So anything that you bring to me as a pastor, because my hands is full. I work a 40-hour job, work myself to death. Then I come in here and pastor. And because we are a smaller ministry, my hands are so tight on the plow, I'm effective. I'm cutting the grass, vacuuming it, beautifying the community. Don't forget that I'm a father. Don't forget that I'm a husband. So I am tirelessly on a whole other level that people really don't understand what I'm doing. Amen. But it's only by the grace of God Amen. that I'm able to do what I'm doing. Because all my resources I put back into the kingdom. Therefore, God will reward me with energy not to go to the strip club, not to go to the casino, not to go to the weed man, not to go to the heroin man, not to go to the liquor store, but to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us go to St. Matthew chapter 24, uh, verse 14. We have to understand the importance of witnessing. Uh, not only do we need to be hearers of the word, but we need to be doers also. If we're not willing to do what's in the Bible, what is the point of being saved? Why are you coming to church? Why are you coming to Bible study? Why are you coming to Sunday school? You basically say, I'm not a believer. And I used to take so offense, and I still do. When I see people do things that's disrespectful to me or disrespectful to this ministry, but when people don't understand, you're not so much disrespecting me. You're not so much disrespecting this ministry. You're disrespecting God. Praise the Lord. St. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. The Bible reads, and it's a read, so who said it? Jesus. And this gospel is referring to the gospel of Jesus Christ, of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness, huh? Unto all nations, and then shall the end come. God's intent is for us to witness. Not for your side agendas, not for your personal thought processes. See, here at Greater Bible Temple, now be all our programs, all our services is geared for people to come in. That is our job. That is our, and we take opportunities from our extra services, our extra programs, our extra concerts. Anything that we put together is not for money, but to win souls. Now, it takes money to come against the devil because today, people of the world, I'm dealing with non-believers, I'm dealing with backsliders, and I'm dealing with lazy Christians. It takes them to be pumped and pride, as sad as that is, to get them into the house of God. See, on the day of Pentecost, from that day forth, we're quoting the book of Acts, they was going house to house. The house in that scripture refers to a church, breaking bread. So you may see us, we have free breakfast, we have, with our Sunday school, we have free dinner with our Bible study. Praise the Lord. And sometimes we have extra dinners, like Thanksgiving dinner and stuff like that, that's, that's not our normal weekly uh, program. <clears throat> but we try every chance we get to open up their ears. And I know a lot of people are against the music programs in churches, but some people come to church to hear your musical uh, auxiliary, your praise in your choir before they hear your preaching. Now don't be offended as preachers, because every preacher thinks they can out-preach the next. Every preacher thinks they can out-teach the next. But you got to get that ear hole open to hear what you're saying. And a lot of times, it's the musical ministry that opens up the, the ear of those that are just coming into the church. Can I get a witness on today? Amen. Let us go to 1 Peter chapter 3. <clears throat> 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. The Bible reads in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always. Somebody say, be ready. Be ready. The reason why a lot of people 
fair. And I'm not just dealing with ministry. I'm not just dealing with our topic, the importance of women, because they fail to prepare. You have to be willing to prepare yourself. It's the same thing in church. It's the same thing in ministry. If you're not willing to prepare, then you are going to fail. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And that's why I put emphasis. I wanted to put more. <coughs> but one of our strong uh, pillars of our church and our leadership was it. So I couldn't go as far as I wanted to that I had to be mindset, have the mindset or the thought process of not to overdo those that was willing to be put in positions that they have never been put in. See, the pastor's brain is so put together differently. I'm thinking of outcome. I'm thinking of if I give this assignment to this individual, will it run them out of the church? Or they have the ability to have this assignment that it may be so much trials and tribulations that come with this assignment that it will turn them away from the faith. See, there are strong people in strong areas, and you have weak people in some areas in the body of Christ. That's why the Bible deals with that when one is strong, he can take care of the one that's weak. And one is weak, one can be strong, and to help him. Praise the Lord. Now we all watch, uh, what's that movie in the 90s? Um, uh, they had the Builders of Carter with Wesley Snipes. Uh, Nino, they call him Nino Brown. New Jack City. In the movie New Jack City, I know we always love, especially uh, our uh, young man that was around that time frame where you heard him quote, Am I my brother's keeper? And we thought that he made that up. Or the writer, that, no, that's in your body. Amen. That's in your body. You're supposed to be your brother's keeper. Now, we all have came from the limbs of Adam and Eve, which means we all. When you come from a scientific, because I know the scientists try to say, oh, the Bible is against science. No, the Bible is science. If you will understand, uh, <laughs> when you understand the biblically, the way it's put together, you understand the science. If we all came from the lands of Adam and Eve, that made all of us brothers and sisters, according to science. Which means when we see our brothers and our sisters in the world, that we can communicate to and bring them in. We are seeing our brothers and our sisters go to hell on a one-way ticket. We are their hope. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I'm not asking you to have a seven-day seminar, praise the Lord, outside of McDonald's. It's not what I'm asking you. I'm asking you to do everything in your effort to get them here in this building. And if they're not in a geological graphic area where they can make it to this physical building, they're out the context of an hour or more radius of this building, then at that point we would direct them to a church in the area that we know is preaching and teaching the truth. Let the church say amen. amen. Let's continue reading. But sanctify the Lord in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man. See, we just spoke of this. They're asking you a reason of the hope that's in you with meekness and fear. You don't give a 30 minute to 45 minute Bible study to a non-believer, an atheist, a backslider, or a Christian that is weak in faith. That is not your time as a Christian. Unless they what? According to the writing of Peter, which was the first New Testament presiding bishop, unless they ask. And we don't go back and forth with sinners. We don't do that. That is the tool of the devil to seek you in a position. You might end up fist fighting. Because I was at the golf course in the Rouge Park. I go up there in the summertime uh, to fellowship with my father. It's in Detroit. And one of the young guys came by. Me and my father was talking about God. And the other, his friend, was, we was talking about God. And one guy came back and said, y'all talking about God? I don't believe uh, uh, in God. Now, every bit of Christian, huh? Every bit of Christian. And he just 
say that. He kept talking. It took everything in me to maintain my sanity. <laughs> because I was very upset and I was very angry. Right? But God said, business is what? It's his. So I just simply say, I hope that you one day will come to sense and that God will give you the revelation that he is real. And I left it alone. We don't go back and forth with people like that. You're wasting your time. There is other people in the world that will hear what you have to say, but your job as lay members, as everybody that's not the pastor, is to invite them here. Invite them here. Let your pastor deal with their questions in Bible study. Let those that are teaching Sunday school deal with their questions in Adam. And really, the Sunday morning is set up where the word can go through and they have to, if they're not willing to hear, it still is circulating in the room. It's penetrating somehow, somewhere. Let God do the work. And see, we have got caught up so much putting our energy in wrong areas and we wonder why we're failing. Stop exhorting yourself, killing yourself, right? You can, you can have water, but you can't bring the horse to the water. Praise the Lord. We have the everlasting life. You can't force the life to drink it. Praise the Lord. I thank God for Peter's uh, reading, uh, writing here, dealing with that, because he's specific when it comes to witnessing. We don't want to jam ourselves up as Christians and act like we don't know what we're doing. That's what my pastor, I was under 25 years, Bishop Gary Hart, you don't go back and forth when you out there with us. You invite them to church. If you have literature in the track, give it to them. That's it. Because they will try to trick you all out of, out of your holiness. Praise the Lord. And that's what we're not there for. Uh, a few more scriptures and we're going to prepare to close out. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. The Bible reads, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor me his prison, huh? but be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Don't be ashamed to witness the goodness of God. God has been good to you, and you scared to tell somebody about it? Huh? And the only reason some of us are still alive is because we go to church. Huh? You looking for God to bless you with more money? The reason why you're still alive is because you're paying your tithes and all. Huh? That's all in the time with grace and mercy. We're looking for a payoff like the mega millions and the Powerball. God does not work that way. Huh? But the blessing that you do have, the money that you are getting, the job that you do have, the transportation you do have, the place where you live that you do have, be thankful for that. And don't be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord. What is the testimony of the Lord? Jesus Christ's entire life on his earth. The Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's his testimony. How? Huh? It's right there in black and white for you to read. And as Christians, that is what we're supposed to be doing. Spreading the good news. What's the good news? The gospel of Jesus Christ. What's the good news? That when you got in that accident, you didn't die. Amen. What's the good news? You got a better job. What's the good news? I used to be hooked on drugs. What's the good news? I used to be homeless. What's the good news? I used to be broke. Then I have a pity to my name. But God has created, huh? has created through his testimony, a testimony of me. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Last scripture we're going to prepare to close out this Sunday school. Hopefully we're all getting eager and geared up with this weather break and we in Michigan, so Mother Nature praying tricks on us. One minute is hot, next minute is cool, next minute is snowing, then it's 70 degrees. But we should all be gearing up because there's no excuse when that weather break the witness and evangelize. Let the church say amen. amen. Last scripture, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. <clears throat> Romans chapter 1, 
Verse 16. Let's see, people will say it's contradiction in the scripture. Most times, you will see that it's confirmation in the scripture. It's just based upon your ignorance that you can't have the intellect because you ain't saved. You haven't been baptized in his name. You haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost. So therefore, according to scriptures, you don't have the intellect to interpret the kingdom of God, which is the word. That's the problem. They see it in Nicodemus. Praise the Lord. When Jesus speaks in Nicodemus, if you have not been born of water and spirit, you cannot see. I see. I'll be looking at clouds. I'm looking for the heavens. Huh? What that brittle gold man is, I can't see it. Oh, it must be because it's cloudy today. No, it's referring to the scriptures. You cannot have the correct interpretation of the scriptures without being born of water and spirit. I don't care how smart you are. How many PhDs that you got? Huh? You cannot correctly interpret the scriptures. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, the Bible is why I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Who? Of T.E. James. Nope. Crenfield O'Donnell. Great. Pastor Jamal Brown. Bishop Charles Ellis. You want me to keep going? I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Now all these pastors and bishops and us, these are good men of God doing a good work. But that's not who we're not supposed to be ashamed of, the gospel. We're supposed to not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because you breathe. With no atheist, there ain't a God. Then why are you breathing? Huh? Why would you drink? You urinate. Huh? Why would you eat? You defecate. Huh? That's not two rats eating each other. Praise the Lord. Because if you want to see uh, procreation through two rats eating each other, you just keep hitting rocks together and see if they make another you. Just keep hitting the rocks and see if they make another you. <laughs> you will see mistakenly that's wrong. Praise the Lord. For it is the power of God to salvation. There goes that salvation word again. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, they was dealing with Jews at first. They even had a council meeting where the apostles at that time were arguing should the salvation of the gospel be in, in, invited or extended to the Gentiles, which is all of us. All of us. Praise the Lord. So that was the mentality during that time frame of the writing of the scripture. But if we're saying we should be out here witnessing, we should be out here evangelizing, we shouldn't depend on our media department, we shouldn't depend on your pastor and Dwayne going out passing our flyers all the time. We shouldn't depend on, oh, they know the building because we in the paper. We listen with the churches in the paper. We shouldn't depend on these artifacts. We should depend on ourselves. Sheep beget sheep. You never saw a shepherd have a sheep for a baby. Huh? He had a relation with his wife, and they didn't produce a baby human, they produce a baby sheep. <laughs> you ain't never saw that. So why would you expect your pastor? Huh? They want to see your pastor face. They want your pastor to be friendly at the local speedway, the local grocery store, huh? The local movie theater, if your pastor chooses to go to these places, your local rec. They want to see your pastor's face. They want to see how he handles himself in the community. But it ain't your pastor's job by himself to be out here witnessing and winning souls. So hopefully this Sunday school can be a great benefit, uh, not to the members here at Grand Bible Way Temple, not me, only for those that will witness and view this Sunday school. We love you and God bless you in Jesus' name.